Hey everyone, this is Mike from the Comic Book Trove, back today with another book review, and today I'm going to be taking a look at Batman The Killing Joke, the Deluxe Edition, or the most recent uh, printing of the Deluxe Edition at least. Uh, there had been a previous printing of this, uh, one which I did own actually, ended up giving that away to a friend, so I re-bought it and got this newest version. Um, so let's take a look at this today, it's obviously it's quite an iconic, very well-known Batman story. So for that reason, there probably won't be much I'm going to say about this that kind of uh, is in any way groundbreaking or... Uh, or anything that's not really been said before. It's kind of one of those that's been talked about so much it's hard to really say anything new about at this point, or at least that's how I kind of feel about it. Um, but certainly I'll give my opinion on the, on what's going on in this book as to whether or not I believe it deserves the kind of high praise and, and reputation that it holds as one of Batman's greatest stories. Um, looking at the dust jacket here, this is just the, uh, the full image of the Joker, of course, with his camera for a pretty notorious moment in the story. And uh, looking on the back, we get that blurb. Just focus on that a little bit more. Just giving you the information as to what goes on in here. So this is an Alan Moore story. Alan Moore being the writer, the artist on this was Brian Bolland. And uh, that's quite uh, a unique thing about this book, really, is that Brian Bolland, not an artist who's really ever really been much of an interior artist, primarily always focused on covers in his career. Um, just show this wraparound image there on the book, again, featuring the Joker taking some photos. Um, yeah, Brian Bolland illustrates the entirety of this story throughout. I mean, it's not as a long story. It's a pretty thin book, you know, as Batman stories go. It's really quite short. In fact, probably about half of this book is actually extras. The, the Killing Joke story is only about 50 pages long for anybody who's, uh, who's not aware. So it's something that I imagine most people will read through pretty quickly. Not likely to take you multiple sittings to get through the whole book but this is something that uh, probably is a must read to be honest for, for any Batman fans who somehow haven't quite got to uh, getting around to reading this one yet. Um, yeah so what this primarily focuses on as I'm sure most people will know already and even if you didn't the artwork's kind of given it away already is that this is a story heavily focused on the Joker as a character and uh, I suppose I should just give a spoiler warning here. As I say, even though it is a very famous story, and I think most people probably do know the gist of what goes on here, if, even if you haven't read it, um, I will say, just in case, that I will show off uh, quite a bit of the artwork and talk about the key plot points here. There is an introduction in this version by uh, Tim Sale. Obviously, that's a little bit bittersweet now. Tim Sale did pass away not too long ago. Another great creator associated with Batman. Um, but uh, here we go then. So the story opens... And we get uh, this scene with Batman driving into Arkham Asylum to confront the Joker and have a conversation with him. And this story may well be short, but it does do quite a bit to explore the relationship between Batman and the Joker. And this kind of reliance that they sort of have on each other. That kind of warped relationship that exists between them, that dynamic. Um, but this is first and foremost an origin story for the Joker. Which in itself, not everybody likes, I think, because some people prefer the Joker to be this kind of mysterious entity whose past is kind of up in the air. Nobody really knows why he is the way he is. Um, but this story gives what I would consider to be still the best take on explaining how somebody might become the Joker. Um, the flashback scenes take place in this kind of um, almost black and white sepia style um, in between you know, scenes set in the present which appear in full colour. And the Brian Bolland artwork is really quite nice. You know, he's, he's got a very cool style. And um, the fact that this is probably the most substantial story that he ever did full pencils for in the interior artwork kind of gives this story something special about it as well, just for that reason alone. Um, but yeah, so what ends up happening in this story, the whole point of Joker's plan, as well as it showcasing his background and explaining his origin, is that he plans to do something horrific to Commissioner Gordon, which you see here in famous scenes now, uh, where the Joker turns up and shoots Barbara Gordon. That ends up uh, paralysing her. Um, DC would incorporate this into their main continuity to explain how she would go on to be in a wheelchair from this point on and become the character Oracle for quite a long time after this story, even though this was not originally intended to be a canon story. Um, it ended up being adapted so that it was. And the point being that um, he does this to to torture Jim Gordon, basically, and to, then he captures him and psychologically tortures him further and tries to prove his point that anybody, no matter how good they may be, can be turned as crazy as he is if they experience one bad day that's bad enough to completely destroy their mind. That's the plot. That's what his scheme is this time around. 
And that ties into his origin as well, because the whole purpose is that he himself, back in the day, had one horrendously bad day, which then caused him to snap and become the Joker. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting plan. It's an interesting story. And it doesn't end up panning out, you know, just to, to say that now. Um, the Joker is ultimately proven wrong. I do like this. It's probably just about one of the most iconic comic book panels of all time. You know, I've got to say, this this amazing scene where Joker's fallen into the chemicals and he emerges. And uh, that's just, yeah, as I say, iconic. Just one of the most sinister looking images of the Joker I think there's ever been. Um, the, yeah, the Batmobile from this time is quite hilarious as well. It's got this sort of face on the front. I know that's a throwback to... Um, the classic Batmobile design in the comics before this story, but I always thought it was kind of a weird design for the car. Um, yeah, anyway, so it all culminates here. Batman does track the Joker down, manages to rescue Gordon, and they have a fight. And then in the end, quite an interesting conversation as well. Possibly the part of the story that's most memorable in a way uh, is just this final confrontation here where they have a chat about how one of them's going to end up killing the other the way they're going. And it's, uh, I can't think of a scene in a story that's had just kind of a more normal conversation between Batman and the Joker, just talking quite um, frankly about things, you know. And then there's uh, the, you know, the classic ambiguous ending as well as to whether or not potentially does Batman kill the Joker in this final scene. I never personally saw it that way. I know some people do. That's not how I ever interpreted that to be really. But um, yeah. Anyway, so it is a short and sweet story. You know, I mean, I feel like I've kind of summarised it even in just a few minutes here. I mean, it is obviously well worth reading. I'm not saying that you shouldn't read it. Um, but nevertheless, it is just a quite simple, straightforward and short story. You know, especially for something written by Alan Moore. Normally his stories are quite complex. They deal with interesting concepts and ideas. And it's not that this doesn't have anything interesting about it, but it's not quite... Um, not quite the same as some of his other stories. Um, there is this short story included in here as well. I think this is included in most versions of this. Um, but it's just a short story with this kind of random, unassuming guy talking about how he would like to kill Batman, but not for any particular reason, literally just because he could do it and nobody would understand why it was done. Um, yeah. Again, illustrated by Brian Bolland. I think he might have written that as well. Um, but uh, yeah, then in the back you get quite a few extras, you know, besides that bonus story, there's a few other things in here, some sketches. Um, all this by Brian Bolland as well. But uh, yeah, quite a nice collection of images. So, is it one of the very best Batman stories? Well, I guess it kind of is. Certainly it's the best take on a Joker origin that I think there's been. Um, it is something that I do definitely recommend people read, but I don't think it's absolutely incredible stuff. You know, I don't think that most people will probably read this book and feel like it's something that's, you know, among the very best comics ever written. I mean, I don't know. Maybe some people do. I don't personally feel that it is. I feel that it is an enjoyable story. Um, certainly the scenes dealing with Barbara Gordon. I know that, uh, you know, they cause a little bit of controversy, especially, you know, in more recent times, people look back and... And it's, it's something that's maybe not in the best taste as to how that's handled exactly. Um, certainly not my favourite part of the story, I'll say that. But uh, in terms of the more of the interesting part for me focuses on that dynamic, dynamic between Joker and Batman. And I think that that is quite interesting stuff. But overall, for me, there are better Batman stories out there that I would recommend people read ahead of this one, to be honest. But I will, would ultimately say that it is something that uh, probably should be checked out just so you can form your own opinion on the story, really, if you've never read it. Um, but let me know what you think of The Killing Joke at the end of the day. It's something that I'm sure a lot of people will have an opinion on. Maybe you uh, completely disagree with me and think it really is just about the best Batman story ever written. Or like me, you think perhaps not for one reason or another. But uh, regardless of that, I would like to hear what people do think and I'm always interested in, uh, in hearing about that. So thank you as always for watching this though. If you've stuck with me all the way through, I'll be back again soon to discuss something else.